Hello everyone and welcome back to the Rochelle on the Miller YouTube channel. Today I am featuring the hot air balloon digital stamp in this birthday card. I printed this image on top of Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper and I'm going to use my Copic markers to color this in. I must admit that the moment that Rochelle launched this digital stamp, which has been a few, few months already, well, a bit longer maybe, um, I was immediately in love with it. But I was a bit hesitant about starting to color it since there were so many details in it in this hot air balloon. So I sort of postponed using it, but truly I couldn't resist finally sharing a card with this amazing digital stamp. Now, as you saw me doing, I decided to go with a really neutral color on top of my hot air balloon. And now I'm going to color the flowers and all of the tiny details on top using my Copic markers. The colors will be all a tiny bit darker than what I just used for the overall balloon so I'm not worried about first adding the base code and then just coloring over it with my markers. If you want to and you have for example um, a lovely ink to do some ink blending you can also take a really soft ink, ink blend first the base of the hot air balloon and then color over it. That's definitely also an option. But in this case, I didn't provide any masks, so um, I just went for it. I'm also going to later on cut this image out with some dyes, so I wasn't bothered finishing it right until the edge because I'm going to trim this panel down. So um, the colors for today, if you want to revisit the combinations, you can find them in the description box down below as well as on my blog post. There you have everything linked. Um, I decided to go with really soft uh, neutral uh, tones on the base and then actually kind of muted colors on the flowers themselves. Um, I haven't used this combination often. I'm going to create some blue flowers, pinkish reddish flowers, purple, some flowers will just have one color of markers because it's so tiny that it's really hard to do some gradients. Um, so just to you uh, when coloring uh, this adorable image. I try to color all the same colored flowers first and then continue to the other color but of course at a certain point you don't know whether you can add um, a specific color to a flower. So I'm returning once I sort of colored everything almost in uh, until everything really is colored. So I have this really soft muted purple. The pinkish reddish color is not red in your face or pink in your face. It's a really soft, um, delicate pink, but there is enough contrast from the darkest towards the lightest marker. For the greenery, I ended up using one combination for all, uh, only two markers max, and then just working my way through all of the images. I must admit that later on, um, reviewing this video and also just seeing the end result, I found the coloring really uh, therapeutic. It was really fun to do. I took a bit more time than what I usually need when it's uh, with larger images because there you have tons to color and you have less to worry about going outside the line. So I really changed my speed depending on how big the areas were to color in. But if I need to and I may make mistakes, I can always use my colorless blender to get rid of the mistakes as, as much as possible. Um, just Take in mind that uh, whenever you start with a base color and you need to fix mistakes that it can be that you need to just patch up the base work as well. So I don't know about you but um, if you haven't colored this Im image yet but you also love it as I do, I hope that this um, this video can actually inspire you to grab that digital stamp um, that you have been dreaming about coloring uh, to just create that gorgeous card that you might um, had in your head before. 
So for the insides of the flowers, I did go with yellow. I first considered using a softer version of uh, the pink, the purple, the blue later on, but in the end, coloring everything in yellow just was that that vibrant color that I needed on my hot air balloon. And in case you need to, you can always add more layers. Just keep in mind that if you go for a base tone and you color it as well beforehand, that if you already use tons of layers for that, um, then maybe just first heat set your paper. You can also uh, color in the base later on or maybe just create the most stunning um, sky around your hot air balloon and keep the base wide. I think that would be gorgeous as well. Definitely check out all of the inspiration by Design Team. Tons of cards were already created with this amazing digital stamp. So maybe there is just one card out there that really helps you forward. Uh, also on the side of Rochelle Anna Miller, you can find all of the inspiration. Once you tap on one of the digital stamps that you might want to buy, um, you can find tons of inspiration. So here I have this blue color combination. It's one of my favorites. Um, and I noticed that I use this one really in periods. Like it has been ages since I used this uh, blue combination. But I think using it today on this card will just boost this combination again in my cards. Uh, it's most of the time um, this way. I have these periods where I really use all of the bright colors out there. And then I go for more muted, so I really, really love that. So here, as I said in the beginning, it was time to figure out how I was going to fill up the uh, empty flowers so far, uh, because I sort of almost figured everything out. I just try to have a mix of all of the colors and not have too much of the same colors next to each other. From time to time you can just not, you cannot help it and it happens. Definitely if you are like me and you start coloring really randomly and you haven't figured out colors, uh, then it might be that you end up with tons of flowers with the same colors. You can also use just exactly the same colors for all of the flowers if you want to. That's all up to you of course, but I think this digital stamp can end up so different depending on who is using it and what kind of vibe you're in, uh, that, that is why I really, really love it. So with the big part finished, I'm just going to color in these tiny final areas actually, because this little girl is really little when you compare it to the hot air balloon. Uh, so it was a really quick coloring uh, from now on um, to get the rest colored in. And of course, if you want to, you can give this card a background. Uh, but I ended up leaving it white because I had already so much color going on and I really wanted those colors to be the focal point of my card. For the skin tone I am using my, well, my most used skin tone color. Of course there are other skins and I think it's really lovely that depending on who you're giving it to that you can sort of match it. This card actually ended up to be the birthday card for my colleague and she has this gorgeous brown hair, curly hair um, with the wind going through the hair of this girl. I really think she can represent my colleague. Um, so I just, I just tend to try to mimic uh, a bit the person I'm going to give my card to. Um, so that's why she ended up with dark brown hair. Um, and I just did a few um, flicks here and there, tried to follow the lines that Rochelle Anna Miller already applied to the illustration and just switched in between markers. The bunny has the same colors as the hair because again, I already had all of these colors above. I didn't want to overdo it or distract from all of the flowers. So I'm almost done with the coloring. I'm just going to adapt the basket a tiny bit more because it's really light and I I just needed a bit more vibrancy there. Um, but once I was finished I could zoom out and I took actually the inside and out stitched rectangle stacks, stacks from uh, my favorite things 
This gives me uh, a panel slightly smaller than an A2 size. This is an A2 size um, die cut, well, negative from a die cut. Uh, just to show you that it's going to be smaller, I'm going to put a pattern paper behind it. So I just needed a sentiment. This one is from the birthday script from Hello Bluebird, a really volatile stamp set when it comes to birthdays. And then I had to figure out which color of pattern paper I was going to put behind. And I wanted it to mimic a bit the colors uh, from the hot air balloon, so purples were an option, green, and then of course I needed to have the color still in my package. Uh, so I went through all of my scraps to find a piece of paper and I ended up with this green, but I first searched whether there was another one that was better. Definitely put your panel on top of the pattern paper you want to use. Uh, check whether there is like a similar color. For me, that's that's what works the best um, when I have a color that returns. It's a bit in my comfort zone uh, when I stick to that method when choosing my pattern papers. So I'm going for the green. I don't know if this would have been your choice because I really think that you can go several ways. Um, but yeah, if you want to reserve a bit of your pattern paper then just make sure to die cut another piece out of it before adhering it to your panel. I think today I was just a tiny bit lazy because I used my pen and paper completely, trimmed off the excess and then I put my panel on top so I'm actually covering all of this beautiful pen and paper so it's not really economic uh, to do it this way. Uh, well, from time to time. Um, so I just trimmed off the excess and then I'm going to add the colored a piece on top using uh, some foam tape. First just making a bit of space on top of my craft area here. Um, I store my uh, pen papers into a pocket. They are actually for my favorite things, the ones that I'm using and I'm just trimming off each time the excess because the pockets are really large um, and I just make sure that it fits a bit nicer in my drawers, um, just in case. So I'm going to use some foam tape. There are several foam tapes out there. You can also use some fun foam to help you. And normally that is also a bit more economical, but uh, well. Um, I have this uh, foam tape. I had it for a really long time. This one is the Big Mama foam tape roll from Simon Says Stamp, which actually is like a foam tape that isn't the biggest or highest of dimension, but it just gives it's like it, it is comparable to the height of thin uh, foam squares uh, and I really love uh, that type of dimension. It's just not too much, not too little, it's just perfect in between. And then once I have removed all of the backings, I am going to center it on top of my card base. And then we will finish it off using some iridescent bubbles tiny from Studio Katja. So really, really simple card, but I think with this big hot air balloon that it really shines uh, without all of the fuss. Um, I actually also think that it works without any embellishments, but you do you if you want to add like I did. Definitely add embellishments. Um, do whatever feels right. So I just added a few around the sentiment and then one next to the image and then that is going to be my card. So I hope that this video and the card could inspire you today. Um, if you have this one digital stamp that you haven't used yet but always wanted to use, then definitely grab that one and start playing with it. Um, I hope truly that this video inspires you to do so. Thank you so much for being here and to take, to take the time to watch this video. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!